Hebrews 12, verse 2 reads, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Dear friends, this world, if you're not careful, this world will make you fearful. News reports are constantly filled with stories that spell out fear. People are fearful about the economy. People are fearful about crime. People are fearful about so many things. But here's what I'd like to tell you today. If you're worried about something, there's only one answer. And that answer is the Word of God. If you're fearful, the most potent remedy there is, is the Word of God. If you're anxious about anything, I mean anything at all, the cure is the Word of God. All in all, as you get to know God's Word, you get to know God's voice. And as you get to know God's voice, you'll come to know that fear and worry are not from God. Now, I'd like to share with you one of my favorite passages of Scripture. I've read this portion in the Bible over and over again at different stages in my life. And let me tell you, it has strengthened me. I pray that it will strengthen you today as well. Luke 12, verses 22 through 32. Then turning to his disciples, Jesus said, That is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food to eat or enough clothes to wear. For life is more than food and your body more than clothing. Look at the ravens. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns, for God feeds them, and you are far more valuable to him than any birds. Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? And if worry can't accomplish a little thing like that, what's the use of worrying over bigger things? Look at the lilies and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing. Yet Solomon in all his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for flowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? And don't be concerned about what to eat and what to drink. Don't worry about such things. These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers all over the world, but your father already knows your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else, and he will give you everything you need. So don't be afraid, little flock, for it gives your father great happiness to give you the kingdom. So you see, friends, our Lord has told us not to be anxious about our life. This means that we should not allow the things of this life to affect us to the point that we become fearful and filled with worry, because we are in the care of an almighty God. Now, friends, with this understanding that God cares for us and that he will provide for us, let us pray to cast down fear and worry and to trust in our almighty God. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your goodness. Right now, as we come before your presence, I come against every worry that plagues the hearts and minds of every believer listening right now. I declare in the name of Jesus that we are not anxious about anything because you, Lord, are in control. I declare that we are at peace in our hearts and it is well with us. It is well because we are in your care. When we are unsure, we trust you to a clear path where there seems to be no way. Where we do not see, we trust you, Lord, to guide us. When we are in distress, we look to you for help, Lord Jesus. And when we are in danger, we look to you for shelter. It is well in our minds 
because we've been covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. I pray and declare your word in Philippians 4, verses 6 through 7, which says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Yes, Lord, we receive your peace into our hearts. We receive the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ, into our lives. Lord, there's none like you. In every circumstance and in every situation, we look to you. You, Lord Jesus, are the one who provides peace. You provide strength and you provide power. We look to you, Father, because it's only in you that we can overcome. From this moment forward, I reject the spirit of fear. I dismiss the spirit of fear through the authority that is in Jesus' name. And right now, I speak the peace of God upon every man, every woman, boy, or girl who is under the sound of my voice. I speak wholeness. I speak freedom. I speak life in Jesus' name. No longer will we as your children be bound by demonic spirits. We stand on your word that tells us that you have not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Lord, your word in 1 John 4, verse 18 says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. Father, your love is indeed perfect. It was your love that sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for our sins. Your love was perfect. And it is perfect and will forever be perfect. And for that, God, we praise you because such a love casts out fear. And so, Lord, I pray that your love would fill our homes and cast out any fear that may try to reside there. May your precious, pure and holy love fill our hearts and minds and cast every trace of fear out of our lives. Father, we rejoice as your children because you are a God who goes before us. You're the God who paves the way and you take care of all our cares about tomorrow. Thank you for the promise that you will never leave us or forsake us. Father, I thank you because in your word, in Psalm 34, verses 17 through 19, it says the righteous cry out and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed. The righteous person may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all. It's you, King Jesus, who rescues us from all our distress and all our troubles. Although we may face many afflictions, we will not worry about them. We will not be anxious over our troubles because we trust and believe that you will deliver us each and every time. Lord, I bless your holy name and I thank you for listening to this prayer. Thank you for being the chain-breaking, delivering, almighty God. It's in the name of Jesus Christ that we pray and we give you thanks. Amen. Then turning to his disciples, Jesus said, That is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food to eat or enough clothes to wear. For life is more than food and your body more than clothing. Look at the ravens. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns for God feeds them, and you are far more valuable to him than any birds. Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? 
And if worry can't accomplish a little thing like that, what's the use of worrying over bigger things? Look at the lilies and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing. Yet Solomon in all his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for flowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? And don't be concerned about what to eat and what to drink. Don't worry about such things. These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers all over the world, but your Father already knows your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else, and he will give you everything you need. So don't be afraid, little flock, for it gives your Father great happiness to give you the kingdom. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment, but he who fears has not been made perfect in love. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed. The righteous person may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all.